Our genes are what they are, and we cannot change our heritability. Or can we? You might have heard about genetic editing, changing the DNA code that we are all born with, in order to, for example, cure diseases. However, have you ever heard about epigenetic editing? Epigenetics is a layer on top of the DNA, consisting out of very small chemical modifications that we are all controlling every day. And these small chemical modifications, this extra layer, has a huge impact on how genes work. Now, let's imagine that we all inherit a genetic railway from our parents. And on this genetic railway drives the gene expression train. And the gene expression train is driving towards its destination of gene expression. And this can be the color of one's eyes, how long their hair will be, how intelligent they are, but also the risk on certain diseases later on in life. Now, epigenetics is the layer on top of this railway, like an operating system for genes, just as traffic lights are for trains. And epigenetic editing changes these traffic lights, changes the way the genes are controlled. So by switching the lights, they can make a huge impact on how genes behave. Epigenetic editing is not changing the way genes intrinsically are, but how they are controlled and what they will eventually do in our bodies. Today, I am happy to tell you a little bit more about epigenetics and epigenetic editing. Now, first, let me take you back to 1944, when in the west parts of the Netherlands, the Germans occupied this part. And during this time, there was a huge famine taking place which is better known as the Hunger Winter, or Hungerwinter. And during these terrible times, something interesting happened, which made us tip the balance towards using epigenetic editing. Research has shown that women that were pregnant during these times gave birth to children with an increased risk on diabetes, while the brothers and sisters of these children do not show this increased risk. So, that means that there had to be more than the genes, because the brothers and sisters, as well as the kids that were born during the hunger winter, inherited exactly the ge same genetic railway and exactly the same gene expression train. So there had to be more. And that more is epigenetics. Different environmental conditions are placing different traffic lights on top of the genetic railways. And in the context of the hunger winter, what happened was that the environment of hunger placed green traffic lights on top of genes that were actually beneficial to survive the times of hunger. For example, genes that would make these kids crave a high caloric food. However, by the time these kids were born, the environmental conditions of hunger were no longer there. So the genes that were switched on were also no longer beneficial. On the contrary, they actually increased the risk of them to develop diabetes. While for their brothers and sisters who were not born during these environmental conditions, the traffic lights stay red. Now, this example teaches us that the environment can efficiently change the epigenetics. Isn't that fascinating? The fact that such small chemical modifications can have such a huge impact on health and disease. Well, that's what we thought. So researchers were thinking, could there be a way to develop a system to deliberately switch genes on and off? We sure can. Epigenetic editing uses the reversibility and the flexibility of epigenetics to make genes healthy and happy again, without changing what they intrinsically are, but changing how they are controlled and what they will eventually do in our bodies. Now, I am using what we know about the system in the lab to try and prevent therapy resistance in breast cancer. Breast cancer is the world's most common type of cancer in women, and 70% of the people that have breast cancer, their tumors rely on the female hormone estrogen for its growth. 
Now, this is actually a good thing because this subtype, this 70%, is very treatable, which is a good thing. However, an, um, a tremendous amount of these patients will eventually become resistant. And this means that the therapy stops working. This is a very urgent and unmet clinical issue. But the opportunity to predict and prevent this resistance from arising, this gives hope to a more successful therapy rate. But why? Why do tumors that are first very treatable all of a sudden become resistant? And why does this happen to some patients and not to others? As you may guess by now, epigenetics are amongst the factors that cause resistance. And the way the tumor does this is by placing green traffic lights on resistance genes, basically telling the tumor to go. Go and be resistant. Now, what I do in the lab, using a system called CRISPR-DCAS, I try to place red traffic lights on top of these genes, telling the system to stop. Stop being resistant. Now, this system is extremely flexible and also relatively cheap. That means that it can not only be used to treat therapy resistance in breast cancer, but for many other diseases, the sky is not even the limit. In the future, this system could be used to treat different diseases like Alzheimer, metabolic diseases. It could even be used to help organ transplantation. I am an epigenetic editor, conducting the traffic on our genetic railways. But you, and you, and you, you are all epigenetic editors too. Every day you are determining which traffic lights are being placed on your genetic railways by the choices that you make. Of course, you don't have control over whether or not you will develop breast cancer or if you will become resistant, but you do have control over many other things. By living healthy, relaxing well, eating healthy, exercising, not smoking, all determines which traffic lights are being placed on your genetic railways. And by doing this, by living healthy, you can help place red traffic lights on disease genes. <laughs> now, in cases where we don't have control over our environment, we need to deliberately and efficiently find a way to control the genes. And we have already figured out how to switch genes on and off. Epigenetic editing is no longer science fiction. <laughs> Techniques like CRISPR-DCAS can go a long way with helping and curing some of the world's most devastating diseases. But guys, you don't need a lab to have a huge impact on your life. Live healthy, help place these right traffic lights on your genetic railways, because this will make your epigenetics happy genetics. Thank you, Al.